Howdy, howdy, folks. Welcome to Babble with Bronies. I am your host. My name is Everlasting Joy. For everyone, uh, for my co-workers, Twilight is Magic and Mr. Ben, we welcome you to our show. And for any of you who are new here, welcome. Everyone see and hear me okay? I should have everything in order. Everything. The sound should be off. All that fun jazz. Hold on, folks. Got to send a quick message. All right, got. It's actually been a really quiet week here, folks. I am not kidding. It's it's quiet this week. But you know what? I'm okay with that. You know why? Because we're going to. Um, I hope we have good discussion here. So that's going to be just fine. But let's get started, shall we? We have two updates in the news concerning our con the conventions we follow, at least thus far, anyway. Uh, Galacon has a ton of new updates on their site. The ones I'm going to point to, there's their website, by the way. Follow it, follow them on their Twitter, all that fun jazz. And we'll get to the contacts from my site here shortly. But they have, uh, quote, yada, yada, yada. We have some information for you. This is concerning some of their events and all that fun jazz here. There you have uh, the gala event, blah, blah, blah. No matter what, there will never be a, it'll never be a proper gala con without the grand event that gave it its name, the gala evening. Okay, yeah, it's, I figure it's, here's the thing, Mr. Ben. I, with Ustream, I realize that it's probably going to be a bit of a longer lag, but it's the stability that I'm after. Whereas in with MIPS, it's the other way around. Fast, um, you know, uh, half lag, but instability. And I'll take the stability over the lag any day. Anyway, they got the venue maps and tables, tickets and streaming, cosplay contest, art gallery. They even have their um, timetable, the schedule. So check it out. Check out these articles. I just figured to uh, bring you to the site. I think they'd appreciate that a little more. Uh, and the other one, now this one is for Buck, but this one was just easier to use the EQD article than the website itself. I'll give you guys the website itself here shortly, but for now, let's just focus more on um, the article here. They have the winners for the EPCU uh, merchandise contest. I'm not going to go too terribly too much into that, but there's the link. Finally, I'm ready to announce the winners. We had some really great entries. Blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to give you the names because, well, I know you guys can read it and you're going to probably see it, but that's just not the way I like to do it. So, apologies. And, of course, here's their website. And, of course, for a shameless plug... Here's my site. You can find, you know, all the ways to contact us. We also have our um, people we support page, Buck and Galacon, amongst others, are in there. So, you know, check it out if you have questions. Ping, ping one of us, Twilight, Mr. Ben, or my, or myself after the show. Myself after the show. You can get anyone else. Um, on your end, Mr. Ben, it's still showing just fine for me. No dropped frame once. No dropped frames whatsoever. Uh, anyway, let's uh, let's carry on, folks. And for the Brony State news, our usual movie uh, list. This week we have Wall-E for the A movie. Pony One will be Look Before You Sleep. The B movie is Happy Gilmore. And Pony 2 is putting your hoof down. All of those I'd love to see. So I'll hope to see you guys either on Friday on at 7 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Or or um, 2 o'clock the following Saturday. The Saturday coming right after that Friday. That would be the uh, 19th and 20th. So 
Hope to see you all there. But for now, um, those are for later. So that's it for news, folks. So then my next question is the obvious, art or videos? Got one for videos. <laughs> Matt. Whatever we have less of. One video, one art. Well, we'll always have less videos, Mr. Ben. Always. Unless there's some kind of freak, na uh, freak of nature. Fair enough. Uh, two to one art. <sighs> All right, we'll go with art. Let me get a quick peek of who is here. Sadly, I have nothing from him this week, but I do always appreciate him being here, Muffinshire. Uh, we have Tox, and he's the only one here with, he's the only one who has something and is here, so why don't we start out with him. Uh, Tox, I assume you want to um, call about this, right? <laughs> I will take that as a yes. So, let's get him on let's get him on the stream folks, shall we? P O S. Oh, oh boy. Hey, I'm here. Hey, hey, hey. Forgive hey, me, here. folks. I knew I forgot something. If you hear noise in the background, that's me putting blends together for BronyCon. Okay, no problem. And, oh wait, um, DBC Tom, did I get, yes I did, that's Good. right I here. Say, that's Hold your ground. This week. So, uh, let me bring up this. Uh, VM, Mr. Ben, please. Ah, there it is. And there it is. So, <laughs> tell us about it. Um, well, it's a DBZ version of Tom, which is absolutely freaking hilarious, because I, someone was mentioning in the stream to do it a while back, and I, I was eventually going to do it, but I decided to get to it earlier than I did. Mm -hmm. So, it, it's so basic in its own form. I don't know really what you want me to go on it, in on it more. Unless you have questions on it. Well, what's it based off of? Like, from it, what scene? It actually is... Hello? I could fight. I took a, a bunch of rocks in that whole background, and then I darkened all the rock colors to make it stand, because Tom is such a bright... He's so bright that the original color that I was using on the rocks was way too... was way, 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 way too light. And then I really wasn't going to have much floating rocks in this one. <laughs> I decided to put, like, floating rocks, because I like putting floating rocks in all the pictures, it seems like. Because it, what it does is that it, it, the floating rocks, like, on the corners that you see there, it helps um, delete the empty space that would be there. Because if that floating rock on the top right wasn't there, then you'd have a lot of empty blue in the sky, and your eye would be kind of looking up there. Which is not a good thing. No. The focus is on Tom here. Mm -hmm. And well, the thing is, and it, it was such an easy. It wasn't. It wasn't that hard. Right? I had no shading that I had to do on Tom like the other characters. But the problem with this one that made this one really, really, really hard was trying to make his color 
blend in enough where it pops, but the, the background is not overly whatever. And you've been you saw the stream many times, so you mm -hmm. saw how how involved that uh, this picture was. It actually wasn't hard. It was the background was more time consuming than the actual character. How so? Just it, well, look at the background. I mean, Thomas, <laughs> the thing is, I've only I drawn Tom going back to I, I draw him one other time, and that was in the Trixie comic that I did. But mm -hmm. this is a revamped version. I haven't drawn Tom in close to five months before I did this one. Oh, jeez. So, that was my first crack at legitly drawing him. And he came on all right. I kind of based it off of the show itself. I was, like, looking at it um, when I drew it on paper. It just had, like, but I, I made it more frontal than what you see in the show because it's, it's for the angle that I chose. But... And I, the only thing that I did get, there's a very funny comment on this thing that I will mention. Someone, I believe, I don't know who it was, but someone said something like, it, what, what, it, what's his attack or something like that? And I'm like, <laughs> there's no attack. It's a, it's, he's just standing there. And, it, and he's like, he's, I saw a great comment where he's saying he's defending Rarity's honor. And I'm like, that's, that's <laughs> actually really, I'm actually laughing at that really hard. It's just, it, but no, that's that's or it was like Tom versus Spike or something like that. I saw another one. But you already saw the next one. Yep, but I won't mention that, it, of course. Mm -hmm. I'll have that one. I'll release that one later in the week. Coolio, and we'll be here to pick it up. Mm hmm. Yep. It's cool. Any yeah. last minute question or any last minute comments? Or yeah, uh, uh, no, not unless if anybody in the chat has a question. I was just going to ask that. Chat, do you have a question for Tox? We will see. This is a little bit on a delay, so we'll see how the questions just flow right in. You did a good job on um, coloring him, as you said, making him pop, but not too much. Well, it, it's not it, the, the colors on him and see is the same as exactly as you see in the show. Mm -hmm. The problem is, is that 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 what made it really hard. It was all those background rocks, the ones that the, the dark gray one and the, and the medium one and then the red one that's on the left down all the way to the right. Those, along with the ground, was a much brighter one. If anybody knows the age Applejack one, I was basing the colors off that one initially. But I... I'm not going to get Tom closed, no way. I, was, I never I never give him on the actual characters themselves. I don't feel like doing that because that gives it... It, it, it deviates it too much from... I like to have a little bit of canon into these things, mm -hmm. but at the same time have the different type of flair. It's that's why I didn't add the clothes to any one of these because you can you can you can get away with it. It's just more of a different pony verse in a sense. Uh, we have one question that I ugh. Kandiru asks. I see. What do you, yep. What do you think Tom's power level ought to be? Um. Uh, if you look in the relationship to the other characters, it's probably the weakest. <laughs> I, I like to call Tom the Yancha of the, the DBC ponies that I've done so far. <laughs> he's he's the true Yancha, the one because I don't really get. I never gave him an attack, and I gave him just um, I just I just gave him a pure power poster because you can't really give him an actual attack. He's just a rock. He's just, he's what just do you want a rock. Do? There's no motion to the character, so I can't really do it. <laughs> All right. Thank you very cool. much for coming on here and talking about this. Mm -hmm. And I will be so. And I will go back to chilling in the chat. Sounds good. See you then. Mm -hmm. All right. Yep. Hold your ground, folks. By Toxic Mario. Yeah, I apologize for not getting my ugly mug out of the way there earlier. But uh, which one should we go with next? Let's go with this one. This one is titled "Rarity" by Death Pony. I saw this one, and I just, if I had not, if I didn't have an agreement with him that I would show his stuff without permission, you know, I already got his permission uh, beforehand, folks, this is something that I would have grabbed just about instantaneously. This is the kind of stuff I love seeing when he, um, uh, that he makes, among other things, of course, but... Let me see if there was something he said about this. Nope. 
I really don't know what to write about it. <laughs> Twilight is magic. Victorian duck face. I find this more pouting than a duck face. Because if it were a duck face, it'd be a little bit more pronounced, and we'd be going, um, well, we'd be revolted by it. Anyway, um, let's move along. Uh, kind of, I thought I'd mix it up a little bit and hit the regulars first this time, as opposed to the new, fo um, new folks that I normally do. So, yeah, I'm going to be hitting more of the, um, more of them before I hit the uh, the uh, established people, or hit the established people first, the people we do here um, a lot of times, and then uh, hit the newer folks today. I just thought, why not mix it up a little bit? Anyway, this these next three are by Pixel Kitties, and this one is titled "The Night Shall Last Forever." <laughs> Yes, because clearly I am sadistic. Anyway, um, the thing that I really love about this one is the armor re reimagine. If you want to, I'll, I'll call it that. But um, yeah, I'm with you on that one. T uh, Twilight is magic. <laughs> that doesn't shock me too much, Tox but I'm not going to go any further than that. However, like I said, the thing that I love about this is the fact that the um, armor is redone. And I think this silver, this silvery metallic type is really good with uh, Nightmare Moon. Let me get you guys the link. And there's another thing I forgot to do. Fantastic. Really on the ball today, folks. What was it I was going to say? Oh, yeah, one other thing, though. Where's her tail? I don't see her tail. Anyway, let us let us move on. Now, this next one I really like. This one's titled Octavia by Moonlight. Oh, yeah, yeah, I can just make fun of my accent all day, aren't you guys? Yeah, especially you, Tim. Yeah. Quote, by Luna's beard, I've been doing a heck of a uh, night and moon related stuff lately. Yada, yada, yada. So-and-so asked for Octavia in the moonlight. So I, and it so happened, I also wanted an Octavia printing for upcoming conventions. End quote. <laughs> this is just a really, really well done picture in my humble opinion. It's the kind of thing that I would that I could be see see done in the show. That's what's so wonderful about this pick. All right. And lastly, we have the Spa Ponies. Now, I wanted to bring this one up for one bit in particular. Not just the picture, of course, but... Quote, This image will be available as a button at BronyCon, along with a crapload of other stuff. I bring that up because I'm what I'm getting at is, for those of you convention-goers here in America, you're probably going to find her. You'll at least find her at BronyCon, so if you want to meet her, sounds like she's going to be there. I'm just going to kind of let sit back and uh, watch the chat on this one. <laughs> Matt the Shadow Man. <laughs> Fucking bubbles! Alright, let us move on. Um, let's see, that's going to be the only one... Here, isn't it? Yeah, we've only got one comic, and not here. Oh, yeah, he said he wasn't going to be here. Let's go with this one. This one we haven't had on for a long time, but or this person we have not had on for a long time, but 
This one is by Ryko Illust, titled Ballet RD. Now, the thing that drew me to this one in particular was the fact that I've seen this kind of thing done once before, but it was for a but it was a joke comic. The thing that drew me about this one was this wasn't. This wasn't supposed to be um, a joke. At least I don't take it as. I take this one as um, dead serious. So it's the odd feeling about it is um, how, how do I want to put this? Appealing. That's why. That's partially why I wanted to show it was because of how odd the um, the odd feelings are. But another thing that really took me was I love the lighting on this one. The lighting is really done well. He knew exactly what he was doing, and I think the scenery is just awesome. <laughs> Mr. Ben. <laughs> Looking good, Spike. Looking real good. That one went in my favorites, and I'm happy to put it there. Uh, let's see. Who do we want to go with? Okay, I'll go with this one, just because I know I said mostly regulars first, but I don't mind mixing it up. This one is titled Philly Celestia by High Roller 2108 Requested, Philly Celestia in pajamas drawing with crayons. Forgot the pajamas. End quote. Over there. I saw this one and I thought, okay, this is just uber cute. This is something that I know I'm going to give y'all diabetes over. So I thought, I got to show this one. Again, the lighting is really nice here. I'm not quite sure if, if she's wholly pink there, but I'm not going to... Um, I'm not going to hold that because I don't know. What I will say is... This is cute. <laughs> Matt, that, yeah, that's partially true. Was it good for you, JRP? <laughs> and now I am to deeds. Very good use of colors in this one, too. Okay, Let's go with this one by Harwick's Art. Shiny, happy, candy-colored heroes. One of the things that I do want to highlight here, folks, is a quote of his. Quote. As for the art itself, this one wasn't even a very good sketch, but for whatever reason... I just kept coloring it anyway with no real planning or intent as to what I was even depicting. Kind of art therapy. End quote. I know it's a means of relative, um, well, relative positioning, but this is not good. This is... <laughs> I'm having trouble piecing it together. All I'm going to say is, if this is your one of your lesser works, Harwicks, people would, as I said in the comments, people would kill for half of this skill. There's the link. thing I, wanted, I do want to uh, state about this one is, I... Yeah, I'm with you on that one, uh, Twilight is Magic. Very colorful, very bright, as he, well, put in the description for crying out loud. It's nice to see a happy painting. Mind you, a lot of the stuff I show in here is happy, but... I digress, I suppose. That's, yeah, that's probably the best way of putting it, Twilight is Magic. Without the dark undertone. Let's see. 
<laughs> Sumika. That's a good, uh, yeah, Matt, that's a good point. I, th well, maybe it's, nah. All right, let us move on. Uh, okay. These next two are by Joey Darkmeat, a good friend. <laughs> this one's titled Dancing Duo. I was going to try and get this one in last week, but the queue got so full, I just said, okay, I'm going to, um, I'm just going to have to show this one next week. Am I the only one who gets some kind of Looney Tunes type vibe here with Bugs Bunny as Twilight and Daffy Duck as Spike? Oh, there's a colored version, Twilight? Yeah, like I said earlier, folks, the lag is going to be a bit longer, but the stability will be there. Anyway, um... Top hats, the lines, though... Nah. <laughs> Mr. Ben. <laughs> Ken Colt. One, two, three. And this last one is titled Indulgence. No description given. And... <clears throat> Excuse me. This one, I saw this one and I was like, aww, this is cute. Though it begs, th there is a question I do have to ask that I asked before. Is it an indulgence, folks? Is it an indulgence without chocolate? I want you to think about that for a minute. <laughs> Mr. Ben. I thought so. Okay, fair enough, uh, Matt the Shadow Man. <laughs> Dead book reading. Uber cute on this one. I have to just say that right off the bat. And Link. Yeah, what a jip that was. Cookie Monster being forced to eat vegetables. I, I know I'm only starting the fire of divergence here, folks. So, And I apologize for that. But um, let's move on before we go there. Um, okay, let's go with this one. Haven't We haven't heard from him in a while. This one's titled Different Choice by Ruble Gun. What really stuck out to me on this one was A, the snow effects, and B, the use of a focal point. I know we've showed a lot of snow effect type pictures on here. I, there was a really good one with Sombra about ten episodes ago. No, that was my fault, Kandaryu. So that you know, again, that was that was me. That was all me. Don't don't blame yourself on that one. Anyway, um, as I said, I love it when they use um, effective weather effects, wind in this case, snow. Really good job of that Rubel gun. And yeah, that little point of light. It's about towards the just up and right of the center. That's what I meant by an effective focal point. That light's going to draw our eyes right to the pony, and isn't that the point? That's what it's supposed to do. So, as a, um... As such, it's a really good use of it. And...
Okay, which one? Okay. Kind of finish this up a little bit here. This next one's titled Vanilla Tea by Luted. We showed her work on here um, uh, we showed her work on here last week. And please tell me that she is not I sure hope she's here and I do apologize if you aren't if you were here looted and I didn't get to you at first. I am sorry for that. Anyway, something that I really want to bring to your guys' attention is, quote, I painted this with some vanilla extract alcohol liquid from a bowl, uh, from a bowl of it I was using to make stuff smell good. It's sort of smudged in with the ink outlines, though. In real life, the drawing is kind of stickly, s sticky and smells nice. Pen in vanilla. What I love about this is just that. It's... I think that gives it a very good, authentic look to it. If you, you know, perf uh, forgive the redundancy. This looks like it's, you know, it belongs in a coffee house or some second, third story um, tapestry in some rich neighborhood in Europe or even here in, like, East Coast America. But, yeah, literally made with vanilla. That's the thing. I thought, what, a, what an interesting medium. I have never heard of anyone using vanilla as a medium for art. So, that's, that's pretty cool. So now it's not just sites that get... Um, <coughs> it's not just your sites that are... Your eyes that are going to be um, pleased. It's your um, s uh, nose as well. Let us move on. Now watch. She's going to pop into the chat right now. Okay, I'll do these. I'll do these two next. These next two are by Citra 360. I'm going to bring them up at the same time because they're roughly similar and they have roughly the same um, uh, description. We'll start with the Spitfire button. Quote: Thinking on ex expanding my buttons to include some background characters complement the main characters. Here's Spitfire. These are, if given that they're buttons, I believe these are for conventions. Here's Spitfire. And we'll get back to Soren here shortly, but here is Soren's link. Once again, he shows off his strong arm of detail and form. I love this picture. He really should, um, you know, as, you know, especially in the sense of an autograph picture and such. Anyway, moving on to Soren's. Yeah, definitely. I do have to agree with you on that one, Twilight is Magic. The um, the pie. Very funny, Mr. Ben, by the way. The pie is an interesting... Um, it's a nice touch. I'll check that again. Gotta have pie, even in flight. One of my new buttons focusing on a few of the background characters. My pie. This tasty treat is what all true warriors strive for. <laughs> anyway, um... The tears. The tears are what sell it for me. Alright, let us move on then. Okay. Let's go with this one. This one is titled Three Luna Moon by Karzani. Hope I pronounced that name correctly. When I saw this one, I bursted out laughing. Do you know why, folks? For those of you who know the legend of the Three Wolf Moon shirt, you that's why. 
for those of you who don't know, well, let me put, uh, let me tell you the abridged series of this story. There was a shirt on Amazon that was, you know, looked just like this, except with wolves instead. And uh, it got really, really famous because, not because the shirt was popular, but because of troll reviews. Yes. There were a bunch of reviews on there saying, like, I got the power of the wolf with this shirt, or, you know, something like that. I don't remember the legend wholly, but, um, but, uh, long story short, those reviews basically said, basically ignited the, um, love of those shirts, of that shirt. Just look it up on Amazon or something, and you'll see what I mean, and, you know, search for it and whatnot. Three Wolf Moon. But this one is Three Luna Moon by Karzani. <laughs> yeah, Tox, no kidding. That's Maybe you can contact him and uh, say otherwise. <laughs> Overall, it's a great parody piece. And I especially love the whole Mare in the Moon detail on it. I think that's a really nice touch in this respect. <laughs> yeah, to be left to even more troll reviews, Mr. Ben. Of course, those would probably be something like, ponies are st ponies is stupid. Or something like that. <laughs> Alright, we have one, two, three, three bits left. I'll hope he shows up after this. This next one is titled Break by Alasso. Quote, I have a ton of things I want to draw, have to draw. So let's draw something that has nothing to do with any of that. Thought That I thought about a few hours ago. End quote. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to go out and say it right now, folks. Fluttershy looks adorable with all of those um, floaties and snorkel, the goggles, all of it. I think she just looks absolutely adorable. <laughs> Mr. Ben. Bees, my god. So it has absolutely nothing to do with anything, alas, so that doesn't mean it isn't a cool picture. <laughs> it begs the question, why is Derpy wearing her shades on her head when if the sun if the lighting is to be correct, it should be shining right in her eyes. Whatever, it's derpy. I know. <laughs> Alright, let us move on. Alright, this next one is titled Flutter.mov by Skybrush Vifex. Now, I can show this one even though I know it ties to the infamous .mov series. But I thought I could show this one just because it's clean enough. And yes, I will say the line there. Too cool for the pool. This one I love because it's, well, I haven't seen him do something dark. At least not that I can recall. I know you're going to say otherwise. But I think in this case he pulls it off. Pretty darn well. The shading is very nice. I like the shine on the saw there, or chainsaw. And overall, I like that... One of the things that I did like about this one, did, I'll stress that, he kept the pony, the MLP form. He didn't use the dot .mov form. I just didn't... If he would have done that, I would have gone, ugh. But I actually think it really works here, the fact that he kept the usual pony form. 
And, alright. Hey, hey, hey! What'd I tell you about coming in my shed? Moving along. And speaking of terrible voice acting, this last one is by our good friend Colt Steel Stallion titled Where Foals Come From. This is another one of those cases where I wanted to um I wanted to put this one on the show last week but ran out of uh space in the queue. So <laughs> I see y'all are liking my impression, and I appreciate that. <clears throat> let me think. Let me get into character. Daddy, Daddy! I really need to ask you something! What is it, Twily? Where'd your foals come from? Uh, can't you ask your mother about that? I really want to know. Tell me, please. Okay, Twily. No, Matt, I don't because my impression is terrible. Uh, if a stallion and a mare fall in love, they sometimes share beds together to have uh, I'll talk about the bees and the birds and the bees later. I love it when I rehearse these things and I still get it wrong when I say it. And then your mother got pregnant and we got you. Did you get all that, Twily? Twily? Why? <laughs> I'm just kind of letting this last image sink in for a little bit. <laughs> Not the birds. I don't know why I went to the comments. I apologize, folks. And yes, 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 yes. Yeah, that wraps up the art. So, y'all ready for the... <coughs> y'all ready for the videos? You know, I'm going to ask you guys, do you want the song first or the animation first? You know I hate it when you guys do that. You say, like, the animated song or video art or something like that. <laughs> Alright, that's one for animation. Alright, we're going to go with the animation first. This uh, this one's titled "I'm a Toon" or not titled. This one is by "I'm a Toon Link," titled "The Pink Isle."
The Pink Isle by I'm a Toon Link. <laughs> Twy, I love your description there. You can observe the natural process of migrating to the famous Pink Isle. As you can see, the Brony has stumbled upon that which it has sought for its, for its uh, short existence. And here it is, picking up, picking up one. But which one will it go with? The Brony has chosen wisely. All right. Lastly, <laughs> lastly, we have "Shooting for the Stars" by the Dash Dub. Shooting for the Stars by the Dash Dub. Alright, that's it for content, folks. So, y'all ready to move on to the um, heart of the show? Alright, now I'm just going to come out and say this right now, folks. Don't be shocked if we end early, because there's only so much we can talk about. However, I'm just going to throw some of this stuff out here right now. I'm just kind of scheduling this for what it's worth. We're going to talk about Season 1 as a whole first. That's probably not going to take very long. 
Then I have um, a question for you guys a little bit later concerning the episodes within it. And then after that, if you want to bring something up, you know, like a like you think I missed something or you want to bring up an old um, talking point from Season 1, we can do that. Um, let me think. Yeah, that's it. And that'll be the show. After all of those, though, after the show is said and done, I hope you guys stick around because there is one question I want to bring up to you guys first. But that's only going to take like five minutes and I don't want it in the main show here. I just think it seems silly. Anyway, um, so let's get started. Let's talk about... Actually, I have one question for you guys first. There was a point that I wanted to bring up in the last episode when we, when we reviewed the season finale that um, in the last show that I didn't bring up and I'm kind of kicking myself over so I want to get it out of the way. Season 1, episode 26. Do you guys consider that a musical episode or a reverse musical episode? For those of you who are not here, a musical episode happens when there's a major song element, such as um, a major song has to be at least two minutes or more longer, and the song itself must be so... I'll say good for lack of better terms. It must be so good that it overshadows the rest of the episode. Now, a reverse musical episode works the opposite. There's a major musical episode in there, but the episode itself overshadows the song. Winter Wrap-Up would be a um, musical episode. Our, uh, Suited for Success would be a reverse musical episode, for instance. So, um, Best Night Ever, what do you guys think? Right here with Magneto. <laughs> Matt. But that's, you know, that's valid. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah, in my humble opinion, I actually kind of have to side with you a bit, Rainbow Ash. It's... It's both, basically. The song is really good. And if this maybe wasn't... If they weren't going for anything, I would probably be calling this a musical episode. However, the content itself is so good that it could overshadow the... the um, it could overshadow the song as well. If, I, if you must, if you absolutely must... Uh, break my arm, and trust me, if you want to, uh, trust me on that one, uh, if you want to, I would probably have to side more with a reverse musical episode. The reason being is because I find that it's the, it's all the ending bits. The whole shattered expectation thing, but mostly Crazy Fluttershy. I think Crazy Fluttershy se um, steals the episode, in my humble opinion. <laughs> like I said, if you had to pull my arm or leg or whatever it is, um, that's the way I would side. However, I think whoever's saying it's both or, you know, neither, however you want to call it, I can see why you say that and I would have to agree with that. But it's kind of a good, um, kind of a good way to get things started here. So we end with, we end with episode 26. So let's talk, folks. Season 1. All of it. What do you have to say about it? Hmm. <laughs> 
<laughs> Twy. Flutterlights, we're talking about season one, as in um, the entirety. The whole of season one. What did you what do you have to say about it? Crazy rabbit corn. <laughs> that name. So I'm just kind of letting the um, I'm letting the comments roll in here. I know you guys might have a lot to um, a lot to write about, so that's why I'm being ex ex extra generous with my um, time here. We'll be discussing them talks, so, you know, don't worry about that. This is just initial thoughts, initial openings, so. He got planted, remember? <laughs> Okay, uh, before I... First of all, I will acknowledge you there, Matt the Shadow Man. That's definitely a good point, but uh, Kandaru, I think you make a good argument there that um, that's roughly about it. It is two episodes, four, five, and six of Star Wars to any real Star Wars fan. That's, that's actually a really good way of putting it. Yeah, let's... Uh, Question for you guys. If you had to describe season one in one word, what would it be? Mm hmm. Pony Rific, Ponies, Muffin. Unex okay, that's not a bad one, Matt the Shadow Man. Certainly a good one. Magical. Okay, I like that too. If I had to describe this season in one word, I'd actually pick innocence. And the reason being is just kind of that whole tone. You guys have heard me, at least Mr. Ben for certain. And that might be... I don't know if I mentioned it when we reviewed C, um, episode 4, but I know Mr. Ben for sure has been certainly hearing me say innocence, innocence, uh, sense of innocence, mostly through the early episodes in particular. And I think that whole idea around it uh, permeates the entire season. That's... Watch these episodes, and then especially the early ones, and then go watch anything in seasons two and three, and you'll probably see what I mean. How, you know, as Mr. Ben put it, I think it was somewhere he said something like, "This was," or I guess as everyone else is pointing out, it's the first season. As such, it's you know starting point, and really that's about it. It's the starting point. The entire show staff was unbeknownst of what was around the corner. So were we. So was just about everyone. The only ones who probably weren't were um, was the show's target audience. I'll say they were innocent of the bronies, but that's another story for another day. However, for what it's worth, as I said, you get this real sense of um, innocence all throughout the stories. A lot of these stories, especially, like I said, some of these earlier ones, were very... I guess that's the best way of putting it there, um, Mr. Ben. Some aspect that will seem weird or out of place compared to the later seasons. And perhaps that's, you know, just it. And that's, that's another point, uh, Twilight's Magic, is just that. 
this is where most of us start. This is where I have yet to hear a... I have yet to s read the story of a brony who says, I started with anything outside of Season 2. Or, let me rephrase that. Anything outside of Season 1. As in, I started at Season 2, Episode 16, and that's what got me hooked. I'm sure that's true, and that's, you know, fantastic, but... For the vast majority of us, myself included, this is where we started. I would say no, Matt the Shadow Man. Here's the thing. Not the formula of the show hasn't changed in um, from season one and beyond. Most of it is, you know, very similar I'll say that the pur purpose I mean of um, that innocence charm is take a look at some of these stories they discuss in here we have treat others the way you want to be treated we have um, well, what's another one don't judge a book by its cover oh what's another good one I could use well you get the idea take a look at some of these lessons and I've always said that these are both good for kids and adults, and I certainly will always believe that. The thing about the Season 1 episodes in particular, at least most of them anyway, these seem to be geared... I hesitate to use the word especially, but sadly that's all I can use, especially towards the target audience. Now, does that mean that we, as I said, can't learn from it or even appreciate just the story? Of course not, but I just feel that a lot of these episodes in the first season are very tailored towards the target audience. That's what I'm saying. That too, Alex M. Testify, Twilight is Magic. Testify. And you bring up a good point there, uh, Twilight is Magic. C can I just say that I agree with you there, 100%. There's no feeling of that wondrous novelty. But that doesn't mean... It, and I'm just going to say this right now. Just because there's no novelty there doesn't mean the later episodes suck. As a matter of fact, that might not be a bad thing that that novelty isn't there. Because it's going to force you to look at it in a different light. The Seasons. And I hope you don't look at it with the sense of, because it has no novelty, it instantaneously sucks. I hope you look at it, not in a negative light, but just a different light. Look at it how, what's it trying to accomplish? Is there something that the episode itself or the season is trying to achieve? As we, uh, when we reach this end of season two, I'm going to ask the same, just about the same questions here. You know, describe the season in one word. And I hope that suck, or stupid, or lesser, or etc. is on your list. I hope that when we get there, I will have done my job, and I will see a lot of people here saying, I don't know, whatever. Yes, I already do have um, one-word descriptions for each um, season, but I'm not going to tell them. What's funny about that, Matt, is um, I just read that comment this troll left on Faust's uh, DA a long time ago. And, uh, you know, as she put it, I made this show for, you know, not only older... 
I made this show designed so that older people, the parents, would enjoy it. But this would go so far as to include the single, you know, the single people. Us. Or at least in the sense of we don't have kids, so there's no other reason for us to watch it other than for pure enjoyment. And yeah, that's about it. I'm just reading the chat here. It's it's interesting stuff. I guess, or something worth noting, folks, I don't have to be um, up here speaking for you to enjoy the show. I'd go I'd replace Faust with the entire show staff, but I like your point, Ken Colt, a lot. Okay, I I'd let's ask that question there, Matt the Shadow Man. I'm kinda glad you brought that up. Before I do, I'm just gonna read this quickly. Okay, but yeah, let's bring this up now. From a technical standpoint, uh, let's ask Matt the Shadow Man's questions. What do people have to say about Flash animation uh, before the show and now after it? I'll just throw my two cents in here right now. I haven't seen many Flash animations, and before this show, I never saw any Flash animations on television. I've, saw, I've seen my fair share on the internet, of course, but nothing ever on television. Most of them were pretty, you know, muddy, beginner-level stuff. And to be fair, most of it that could have been um, that could have been the case of maybe that was the person's first. But for what it's worth, yeah, all I saw on the internet was just some simple stuff. And that brings up a good point, especially when we get to some of these later episodes in Season 2. We'll be discussing some of the animation technicalities of it, because it's going to be worth discussing. As many people have pointed out when it comes to reviewing these, um, reviewing the entire series, you know, for like, why you should watch it, or why you shouldn't watch it. Well, we're only going to focus on the former. Um... Well, Kandaryu is basically hitting the nail on the head there. Quote, And then Fim came along, and it didn't look very limited to me.
I don't mean to pick on the um, YouTube and um, Newgrounds uh, hobbyists and am amateurs, but yeah, go look at some of those on the internet, and then go look at FIM, and you realize these were made in the same program? So definitely, if there is one thing this show does deserve a lot of credit for, it's, well, just that. Pushing the Flash animation to new and uncharted territory. And I would go so far as to say, um, now I'm just, er, I would go so far as to say that, how do I want to word this? I would go so far as to say that it's going to, um, Muffinshire, you're you're also hitting it on the head there. Boy, I am at a loss for words today, folks. Okay, why don't we take a step back here for a minute, folks. I know we hit, um, we've talked and talked about, um, no, actually, I'm saving that for another, for the next episode after this, I'm sorry. But one thing I do want to ask is, um, That, Matt the Shadow Man. That right there. Okay, um, what was it I was going to ask? Oh, yeah. Well, something I just want to share a bit of a personal story with you, and I'll ask you guys to do the same here shortly. You know how I kept saying, um, this is in my top ten list, this is in my top ten? Well, I thought I would actually do that. I made a list of, um, and this is part two, folks. I made a list of my top ten episodes of season one. Now, I'll spurt them out, but get your guys' ready, because you don't have to do all ten. You can do, like, top three, top one, top... S I don't care. Seven, for all I care. <laughs> but, I'm just going to state for the record that this is only, um, this is not set in stone. And for all I care, at the end of this, the whole list could be destroyed by the end of the day. But, get your uh, top however many episodes of season one ready, because here we go. Uh, do you want me to stop from the top down where you should know, or do you want me to start from the bottom up? <laughs> and then the rest. All the rest. Okay, I got one for 10 to 1. So I think I'll just start there. 10 to 1. But okay, three of them. So I'm going 10, um, 10 down. Yep, that's where I'm going. So I'm, yeah, since I got some nice votes here, I'm going bottom up. So <clears throat> number 10. Apple Buck season. Thing that really, st and yes, if you want to give explanations, that's as just as well. Thing that I loved about this episode was, despite it being a really early episode, you'd think it would have, t um, you'd suffer from a lot of early installment issues and that kind of stuff. Well, there certainly is that sense of innocence here. This works to the episode's advantage, and I really like just how complete this story feels, and that in innocence charm, um, that innocent charm adds um, flavor to this episode. It's I really like this episode.
Number nine. The Sonic Rainbow. For anyone who uh, was there when I reviewed this episode, was that... I think this was the first episode... No, it wasn't. It was the episode just before we moved here. And I I wish I could have either shown 15 or 16 to you guys, uh, to the Brony State. But unfortunately, we didn't get there. Or when we did get over here, it was episode 17. But that's okay. Uh, Sonic Rain Boom. For anyone who was there, they probably are aware that at first, I really did not like this episode. At all. But then, when I review looked at it a second time, and took a different look at it, I loved this episode. A lot. I especially loved basically some of the um, character interactions, or the character interactions with Fluttershy and Rainbow Dash. And I especially loved um, Rainbow Dash in this episode. It's great to see her have a character flaw. It's never really brought up again, yet. But... Just seeing that insecurity is a really good um, bit of character development. Number eight. So we for success. Anyone who um, attended that stream knows how I already loved this episode a long time. What was shocking, though, was that um, I'm surprised it was this low on my list. I'm not kidding. Anyone who was there probably... I probably would have said it's in my top five for crying out loud, but that's what happens when you take a um, second look and uh, take a look at some of this stuff. The thing that I really love about this one, above everything, this show did one thing here, or two things here. One, it gave Rarity's um, love of fashion a substance. It made it substantial, meaningful, interesting. Name me another girl show that has done that. Please, I'll be waiting. Am I too loud? Hopefully that should help a little bit. Any better, folks? I think I'm just putting the um, Canterlock voice on here, so forgive me. All of you are throwing them in here, and here I am rambling, unable to acknowledge them. Number eight was suited for success. Number seven, Dragon Shy. Above everything that I love about this episode, it's that they go on an adventure. I'm not kidding. The thing that I love about this episode is just the fact that they go somewhere. They go on an adventure. Yes. I love that. And I wish they would show a little bit more of those. Number six. The best night ever. Funny thing about this one, folks, I never, I don't know if I told you guys this, but this is another one kind of like the Sonic Rainbow. I certainly didn't hate this one when I saw it, but it never really did anything for me when I first watched it. Then, um, then again, when I took a second look at it, I realized just how good this episode is. Everything about it, the, the animation, the song, the story, all of it, all of it is just so darn good. Number six. Or, I'm sorry, that would be five. I'm sorry. Number five. Party of one. Three words. Crazy, pinky, pie. And now it gets a little bit hazy here, folks. There are three episodes tied for second place. So, number two. I've got a three-way tie between feeling pinky keen, green isn't your color, and look before you sleep. I couldn't decide on either one of these, but to be quite frank, I'm okay with that. When we get to season three, you'll understand it's going to fall into the same notion when it comes to my top episodes. It's going to be, every time I think one episode is better, 
another one, or I'm reminded, wait a minute, remember what this episode did? And then that's going to basically bump them back together as, um, it's going to bump them back into that same level wherein, um, I'm going to say, well, they're still tied. But anyway, as I said, since some people seem to be getting cut off here, look before you sleep, feeling pinky keen, and green isn't your color. These are all tied for second place. The thing about green isn't your color is I love how adult this episode treated the situation. Most other shows would have had Rarity outbursting and be very pedantic in her approach to her jealousy with Fluttershy. She wasn't. While a passive-aggressive approach is not normally a good way of approaching things, it's still a very adult feeling. It's still very real, and it's still very uh, taken seriously. This was one of those episodes that made me realize how good the writing of this show can be. Look before you sleep. When you, uh, Anyone who was there when I originally reviewed this episode... Um, Hold up. As I was saying, um, look before you sleep. The one thing that really stuck out to me in this episode was the tension between AJ and Rarity. When, um, way back when we, were, when we were reviewing it, I said, this is basically an enemies in a box scenario. Whereas in their enemies, they can't kill each other, and therefore they must use their, um, they must work together to get out of whatever predicament they're in. I don't think that's a bad thing. And like I said, the, what's great about this episode is that tension just, builds and builds and builds and builds until it reaches that fever pitch and gets released in the you know via the tree and whatnot. Huh, really. And uh, feeling pinky keen. First of all, if you guys bring that one up ugh. second the thing that I love about this episode is I love the comedy behind it. Anyone who knows me knows that I love the old Looney Tunes and slapstick humor, especially really stupid slapstick humor. And I do like the character interactions amongst uh, Pinky and Twilight in particular. And no, for those of you who are wondering, no, I don't believe the um, moral itself is bad. It was misworded poorly, but that's another story entirely. And we'll get there if you guys want to. And finally, as y'all probably are well aware, number one, Dog and Pony Show. For those of you who are here um, when we reviewed it, the thing that I said that I loved the most about this episode was the fact that it um, took everything that I hated about Rarity and threw it out. And I don't mean threw it out. I mean chucked it. Chucked it so far that I can't even remember why I hated her. And then it did something also amazing. Instead of just leaving a vacuum of, oh, this character is so-so to me, it filled it with reasons why I should like her. And by the end of that episode, I was in utter shock because I couldn't believe, um, I could not believe that I was saying I like this character. But I did. And I'm fine with that. Perfectly fine with that. All right, I've said my bits, so what do you guys have to say about your favorite episodes? I know you guys were uh, rolling some of those off earlier, but um, but um, as I said, I didn't have the chance to properly respond to them, or even read them, for crying out loud, because I was on such a roll. So what are your guys' favorite episodes, and why? I don't think, um, 
I think I know the ones you're talking about, Rainbow Ash, but do not spoil them, because I can probably bring them up. Well, here's the thing, Mr. Ben. I, I don't expect everyone to have a top ten list. I hate, hate, trying to quantify a quality. But I would expect everyone to have at least one episode that they would say that they could easily point to and say, "That's my favorite." All uh, above all the episodes of season one, that episode is my favorite. I would sus- I would expect that because, well, we're human. We judge. So judging would be something that, in this case, we would have to do. <laughs> Marshmallow Phillies. And like I said, just because it just because I will make it clear here, folks, just because an episode um just because an episode did not make it on this list does not mean I do not think it su- or that does not mean I think it sucks. Like for instance, yeah, Cutie Mark Chronicles. That's a good episode. I like that episode. It just didn't make the cut for one reason or another, but that's okay. <laughs> Twilight is magic. I just rewatched some more. Okay. <laughs> well, there are only three of them, Matt the Shadow Man. And I guess to be fair, I could change or. Er, switch them out and put them in, but no, I still stand behind what I said here. Got a couple saying Party of One, at least somewhere in their list, and yeah, that's, you remember what I said when we got to that one, I said, it's not hard to see why everyone loves this one so much. I rest my case. By the way, Howdy Saturn, Go ahead, fire lights. Go ahead and ask your question. Magnesium. Anything else, folks? Because I'm going to kind of move on from here if um, if we're about done with our favorite episodes. Okay. So, as I promised, folks, this is the next part. I know I said um, the top ten was the part two, but I was foolish and said otherwise. Um, so, are there is there any point or thing you want to revisit? Maybe you just want to hear others' opinions on it. Maybe you feel we missed it. Like I said, the aforementioned what is season episode 26, a um, musical or reverse musical episode. Something like that. So this is a time for revisiting things. Maybe you want to re- remember something, discuss it, whatever. I don't care. Throw it in there, and we'll discuss it. He was being sarcastic, crazy rabbit corn.
Oh. Well, that's okay then. Are there any other points you guys want to bring up besides bringing Faust back or not? Because, I'm sorry, I really don't want to talk about that. Although, if you must know, yes, I'm siding with Tim on this one. Matt, um... To an extent. As an earlier episode, I I think it could have worked. And yeah, I think the thing is, is that one was... Pro was I wasn't here when season one aired, folks, so bear with me on timing. But I would be willing to bet my left hand that Winter Wrap-Up was placed where it was because, um, because it uh, fell in line with... It was either spring the next day or spring was right around the corner. Or fell right in the heart of winter. Either way, either way, that's probably why it was where it was. Just like the pet episode in season three. But we'll get to that when we get there. Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to just say, Alex M. The thing is, is um, it does a nice job of giving them character points, but the problem is, is in terms of establishing them, no. I don't think it does a very good job of that. I think it's building on the notion of we're supposed to know who they are. Do I think it's, you know, a terrible episode for that? It fall under the case of, yeah, as you put it, had it occurred in episode three or four? Maybe. Maybe. But I think it's fine where it is, to be quite frank. My least favorite episode. You guys want to know my least favorite episode, eh? Alright. That would be Call of the Cutie. And that's for season one here. So, that's for what it's worth. I'll say that again. Call of the Cutie is my least favorite episode of season one. The biggest, I guess I suppose you guys are going to want to know why I, um, yeah. Blasphemy, Rainbow Ash! Nah, that's, that's completely fine. <laughs> I suppose y'all are going to want to know why I don't like that episode. The reason I don't like this episode is because it follows it follows a cliched story arc. You know, young person doesn't have something or has something that makes them uh, stand out from the rest of the group. So then some group of bullies antagonize them. They spend the episode trying to get that and blah, blah, blah. It's, again, it's the whole episode itself. The thing is, is... Um, the thing that I've always championed about this show is the fact that they usually, when handed a cliched episode, or especially a cliched um, story, I guess that's the same thing, I usually find something good in there, something to mix it up, something to say, oh, well that's interesting, maybe it's because it's either just the characters, or maybe there's actually an interesting twist they could put on it, or something. And the sad fact is, in this episode, they don't. And that really hurt. 
And on top of that, I'm sorry, I can't stand Diamond Tiara for about five seconds. It's like, when she's on screen and has a purpose to the plot, save for one episode, it's like, ugh. But that's just me. Okay, I, th I see a lot of people bringing up Owl's Well That Ends Well again. Flutterlight, they're virtually the same song. The only thing that's changed is just some of the um just some of the notes, so I really don't have much to say about that. That's actually just fine, yo. For for crying out loud, um, Ghostbusters is not one of my favorite episodes because of Trixie, but I can't wait till we get to season three to discuss her because I have a lot of actually good things to say about there. But we'll get there when we get there. It's a means of perspective, Matt the Shadow Man, in that respect. But if you want to think that, that's you know, that's just fine. Sadly, though, as I've said before, in the Stairmaster, in particular, Rain Shadow, they had to put her in there for the, you know, for the letter and whatnot. When we get to season two, I have a lot to say about. Um, it should be back up now. Uh, where was I? Oh yeah. Uh, as I mentioned before, Twilight in season one had to be um, shoehorned into. Um, into the story and that's one of the biggest things about season one I don't know if I really have, am comfortable calling it a flaw or a problem but we'll get there when we get to season two Since we're only talking about Season 1, I don't really want to go beyond things, folks. I just want to stick to it. Focus, focus it on Season 1, please. I, uh, Flutterlights, I said the two are virtually identical, so... I really have nothing to say about the intro songs. It isn't comparing the two to each other.
right. Um, well, I think at this point, folks, um, okay, yeah, we can do that, Matt. I was just going to say any last-minute things, but yeah, that's perfect. Okay, so let's ask it, folks. Favorite song of um, favorite song of season one. Yeah, I never gave this one a good thought. So, uh, which one? I think I have to go with um, at the gala. Just reading some of the comments here. Yeah, I really like At The Gala. I love the big, full um, sound it has behind it from a production standpoint. It's really well done. The 20-person choir backing it up is nothing short of gene. It was That added to it. That's what I want to say. It felt big. It was grand. And every time I listen to it, I just get this whole sense of um, grand splendor. And I love it. Yeah, people keep saying Winter Wrap-Up, and that's perfectly fine. That's another one of those songs that I can I can see why people love it so much. <laughs> Nittany Discord. <laughs> Solo, rain, uh, rain shadow. Is that what you're trying to say? Again, we'll save it for when we get there. Twilight is magic. And, and how is that how is that last statement been holding out for you as of since rainbow uh, rain shadow sorry Matt this one I do have to side with that notion of there are no bad songs here yeah I know I can say that for the episode I won't say that for the episodes but I will say that for the songs ha 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 hypocrite me If I had to pick one, though, I would say, um, <sighs> I think if I had to pick one, it would be the CMC's Ballad, but the only reason behind that is because it's supposed to be bad. It's not, um, I actually kind of like the song not only for that aspect, but just because it, it is enjoyable. But, like I said, if you must make me pick, that's what I would say would be the case. I was meaning throughout, um, throughout the entirety up to this point. Not necessarily just within the show itself, Rain Shadow. I mean, just you, yourself. As I said when we reviewed it, this song is its own worst enemy, and that's terribly sad because it could have been great. It could have been really good. Shoot, it could probably be contending for my uh, top spot. 
but it was supposed to be bad because if it was good, that would be extremely contradictive to what this the story was setting up, which would be stupid from many standpoints. So I don't know why I did that. So like I said, that's why I have to put it there, and I will put it there. But you know, as um, Ghosties is pointing out there, only ah, you tried songs. I'm going to, uh, Brony Faith, we'll be talking about that next episode. And you'll see wh why when we get there. But, um, but I'm, like I said, I just want to keep the focus more on elements of Season 1. Um, I know we're talking about favorites here, but favorite ponies, like I said, just hold off on that one. Save that for next uh, episode of BWB. thing about that one, though, Matt, is it's... It's what I like to call a minor song, and it's kind of just the opposite of a major. It's two minutes, it's less than two minutes, and they're especially a lot like Hop, Skip, and Jump, where they're just simple, they're just designed to be get it out there kind of thing. And that's fine, you don't like it, but all I'm saying is it's just supposed, it's not supposed to be major. It's not supposed to be a major song. And that's why I figured that your question was asking was which major song do I like or like and hate the most. <laughs> okay, why don't... Have we hit everything? I think we're about ready to wrap things up here. There are a few things that I do need to talk about. So, like I said, we're, I say wrap up in the sense of not ending the episode. I mean in the sense of um, of just uh, moving on. I do, uh, Matt the Shadow Man. I really do. And I actually kind of wish they would do that a little bit more. Maybe they will in Season 4, and if they do, kudos. But it's not, you know, it's not the most important thing. But for what it's worth, yes, I do like the fact that there was this overarching thing in there. It said, I like it when shows do that because it says, okay, because it makes you go, okay, what about, or when are we going to learn more about whatever it might be? In this case, the gala. So it's established episode 3, and then sits in your back of the head, and you're like, so when do we get back? But then episode 14 comes along. And then um, you know that at some point it's going to be wrapped up, so when? And then we get the finale. Yeah, I think, I think you're right, Flutterlights. I think at this point we can... Uh, move on to the last bits here, folks. So, I have a... What was it I was going to... Yes, I do think... Or Yes, we are uh, ending the Season 1 talk here, folks. Or at least, you know, the missing points and things we wanted to bring up again. So, what was it I was going to ask you guys? Oh, yeah. Question. Question for you guys. If there was something that you guys wanted to talk about, pony-related, mind you, if there was one topic you guys wanted to talk about pony-related, what would it be? And that, and that it wasn't an episode. See, the thing is, is in between these seasons, I'm going to be doing a lot more, you know, just discussion, stuff like this. Not a ton. We will be getting to season two sometime in August, but um, like I said, if there's um, if there's a topic you guys want to discuss, now's the time to do it because it's fertile ground for it. Okay, something fan related, such as uh, Twilight is Magic. I guess if you have anything, uh, 
if you have anything specific. Yes, be specific, people. This way I can, you know, take note of them and uh, might just talk about it. I will stress that again, might talk about it. Because this means I have to, um, I have to make an hour long, uh, second hour, for us to discuss stuff. But, toys I got? Um, fan games? We might be able to pull that one off. That's a tricky thing. Like I said, the comics are a tricky thing to talk about because, as I said when we um, got here, uh, when someone brought it up, this means this means especially one of two things. Either all of you would have had to have read them, but this more importantly means I have to go out and buy them, then read them, then somehow make them some usable format so that everyone can see it. And the tricky part is how do I make how do I tell the comic story? and then um, have us discuss it all in one hour. BG Ponies? We could resurrect that idea. You remember we did that once, Mr. Ben. Yeah, if you want a resurrected idea from long ago, feel free to throw that in there. Shoot, the next episode is going to be a resurrected, um, a resurrected episode. Getting a uh, high marks on BG ponies. I count at least three. One, two, three. Yep. I got one for Snowdrop. We might do that one. Ooh, I kind of like that idea, Matt. Fave art and vids. Double RB. Okay. No, we won't be talking about EQG, um, Brony Faith. The only way that we will do that is um, after the um, after the video comes out on DVD, and I don't know when we'll get to that. If we do, it's going to be a long time before we get there. Oh, really, uh, J. E. Smith? You want to throw me a um, uh, throw me a link in private chat? I'll take a look at that after, um, like if there's a channel that does it or anything like that. That'd be perfect. Right, what down? Media influence. We might be able to, but sadly, I think in that respect, it's going to be something like, "This is how the media treats us. They're wrong, or they're neutral, or something like that." I might be able to pull something off. I'll see about that, Matt the Shadow Man. Um, some of the fan content stuff, if we ever do that kind of stuff, I'm going to just put that in here. 
fan content a gen arrow. Give me some when we get there, and I'll let you guys know. Don't worry. I'll let you guys know next week or something. Um, anyway, and of course, you can always send the stuff to me. What was it? Oh, yeah. If there's, like I said, something specific you want to hit or something a little bit more general, like, you know, you say t the toys or something, then um, then just tell that to me. Actually, I like that rain shadow. Show writers... Style. I think that's a good one. I think that's a really great idea. I've been toying with that idea for a very long time, RD Loves Pie. A very long time, but... There's a bit of a... I'll, I'll write it down, certainly, but I will say this. How do I, you know... The problem with fanfics is this. It's just like kind of with the comic books. With the show itself, I or with the show itself, I assume everyone's seen every episode, except for new episodes, but that's another story. But when it comes to fan fiction, here's the big problem with it. This means I have to read it. Now that's not a bad thing in the sense of especially if it's short. But some of them can get, well, chapters upon chapters upon volumes upon volumes of uh, story. Which takes time. And on top of that, even if I get through with it, this means I have to expect the audience to do that. I'm just going to let that one speak for itself. Um... Influence outside America. Yeah, I would consider talking about that one, Matt. Certainly. <laughs> Mr. Ben. Like I said, when the show, when I, how do I want to put this? Approaching some of this stuff is um, some of the comics in particular. I know everyone's, everyone wants to talk about them. And I don't think that's a bad thing. I would like to get to them, but that's a case of we'll get there when we get there. Oh, please tell me no. Please tell me no. Anyway, I think I've got quite a bit of them here, so even if I simplify things down, I'll um, I'll take a look at those. But what was it the last thing I wanted to say? I think that's about all I have left, folks, in terms of the show. What was it? Oh yeah, I just wanted to give you the guys the um, uh, preview. Next week is going to be another discussion episode like this. I think what I would like to do is after the end of every se uh, season, and especially the season wrap-ups, I'll go through the whole your story thing. How you got into the fandom. What you like, what you don't like. That kind of garbage. We did this a long time ago, and I thought, you know, I want to resurrect that, uh, that uh, episode... Because my audience has changed since episode since Babble with Bronies episode four, and I kind of want to hear what your guys your guys' story is, what you have to say, what you you know. That's going to be very open and such. So save it for when we get there. But um, I said we might, Mr. Ben. But that's the um, that's what I'm looking at for next week. Then the week after that, I would like to do an interview. 
but we'll get there when we get there. In that respect, folks, are there is there anything else you guys have to say? Haven't decided yet, RD loves pie. And even if I did, I wouldn't say who it is. Not until that Wednesday. <laughs> Mr. Ben. You guys always give these goofy answers when I ask that question. <laughs> All right. Stick around because I've got a question for you guys after this, but I, like I said, I don't have any need to put it on here. So, for all of us here at Babble with Bronies, I am Everlasting Joy, and my co-workers, Mr. Ben and Twilight is Magic, we want to thank you for showing up here. Hope you enjoyed what you saw. Hope to see you there next week as we discuss, well, as I said earlier, <laughs> your story. Until then, farewell.